Hey guys, I'm Jill. I'm Tony. And we're from Let's Travel Family. We are a family travel blog and vlog that to help inspire families to get out and travel more with their kids. But today we are talking about RV internet. If you've never watched our channel before, we are a full-time traveling family who's been RVing the States for over two years now, and we're about to embark on our first world travel experience. We just announced a few weeks ago we're heading over to Bali, Indonesia. Yes, where we don't have to worry about RV-based internet. No, but we'll have other <laughs> internet issues. So we're going to in storage for a few months, head over with our four kids, and then we're going to come back. So we wanted to get this video done for you guys because we've had so many questions about RV internet and how do you get internet in your RV and everybody's always asking this guy. And I'm like, honey, we have to get a video out. We've got to share with you guys how we get internet in our RV. So if you like this video, if you think that it's helpful, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and I'm going to give it to this guy now. Yeah, let us know in the comments too if you got more questions. We can go super in-depth in the weeds. <laughs> he wanted to. He's like, I'm going to go really in-depth and in-deep today. And I'm like, honey, just, just make it easy, simple today. And if you guys want more information, then we can do a second video and you can yeah. really dive in. Yeah, if there's enough interest, I can... For sure. Bring in some outside help too. My friend JJ is an electrical engineer and knows lots and lots about RF. So. He knows the right people to reach out and ask questions too. Yeah, so we'll be covering kind of the basics today of cellular internet. So there's kind of three different types of internet you can use while RVing. There's cellular, so obviously cell phones, hotspots, that kind of stuff. Uh, another type would be Wi-Fi. So public Wi-Fi at campgrounds. Um, or various, you know, places you park, like Walmart, Starbucks, that kind of stuff. They usually have Wi-Fi. Um, then the third type is satellite-based internet. Um, so with that, you have some limitations, but being it's that newer we're too, right? No, it's been a, it's been out okay. for quite a long time, but it's still uh, there's some limitations. There's some physical limitations with satellite that have to do with how fast you can send a signal up to and a satellite flying, you know, 25,000 miles an hour out in space, so. And the expense, too. Yep, it can get expensive, especially if you need a lot of data. So we're not really gonna touch on satellite. Um, all I can say is about campground Wi-Fi, just don't. Um, <laughs> not worth it. Don't yeah. depend on it if you have to work online. Yeah, if you gotta work online, mm -hmm. this is gonna be your route. Um, mm -hmm. It is what it is until SpaceX, you know, gets lower, orbiting you know satellite coverage going in the next two to five we'll see but for now cellular is where it's at so yeah so jumping into cellular based internet so what is it well it's something you probably already have and are holding in your hand and are probably watching our video on right now and that's your cell phone so most modern cell phones made within probably the past five years Obviously, we'll get you internet access as long as you have the correct cellular plan. So that's something we can kind of touch on first. What kind of plan do you need? Well, it depends on what you need to do. If you need to check emails on your phone and maybe join a couple of conference calls here and there, you may not need all this extra stuff. No. But like us, we are full-time workers online and we are homeschooling our kids as we travel full-time and we homeschool them online as well. So we need quite a lot of data and quite a lot of coverage. So trying to depend on just a personal hotspot feature, which for most phones these days, like I said, within the past five years, I don't know if you can even see that, but um, you can turn your personal hotspot and actually share the internet from your phone to other people's phones or laptops or tablets, generally up to five devices. I'm sure newer devices have more, but, um, an Apple product, you can share your internet. With so you're saying that I can take my laptop out and I can use your internet from your cell phone on my laptop? Yes. All right. Yep. Can and I like stream a video? You could. Uh, can I stream a video several days in a row or am I gonna use up too much internet? Aha, uh -huh. so that's where this comes into play. 
Most cell phone plans come with what they call tethering or mobile hotspot. So you can turn it on on your phone. Again, most plans, some plans don't even offer it. But for plans that do, they'll generally give you anywhere from 10 up to, I believe, 20 some gigs uh, with T-Mobile. So that means not necessarily the data that's you're using for your phone, but the data that other people are using while you're sharing it with them. Um, that's gonna count as your tethering or your mobile hotspot data. So that's something to be aware of. If you need this for work, um, save it for work. You know, if the kids wanna do Netflix, if they want to download a bunch of games, go find a public library. And again, public Wi-Fi, that's different than campground Wi-Fi. <laughs> Yeah. So campground Wi-Fi, again, it exists, it's out there. Uh, but most campground, their Wi-Fi is just so slow that it's miserable. Yep. Yeah. And then a lot of the times it won't even reach your rig and mm -hmm. it's only up at the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the activity building or check-in area and that kind of stuff. So you'd have to go work up there. But, you know, I've done it because I've had to. And it's not, again, it's nothing you want to have to depend on. Um, if you work full-time, if you're going to work full-time remote, you're gonna want minimum of, you know, personal hotspot on your phone or moving up to a dedicated hotspot. And that's what we'll touch on next. So you can see here, I have a couple different devices from AT&T, Verizon. And even though this says Verizon, <laughs> it actually has a T-Mobile SIM card in it. And maybe I could cover how I made that happen in our next video with something called an APN. But again, I won't go too in depth. So we have three different mobile carriers yes. and three different hotspots? Yes. Why? So because of that reason, uh, number one is coverage. So depending on where you are in the country, if you're near city, if you're in the, you know, out in a rural area, if you're out west. National parks. National so parks. Boring. You know, if you're in the desert, the mountains, you don't really know. Even if there's a coverage map and it shows, hey, you're gonna have cell phone signal here, that cell phone tower could in theory cover you if there wasn't a mountain in the way. Would or yeah, or, or there's <laughs> there's coverage there, like there wasn't Grand Tetons, but. Yep, so the other thing you run into, so let's say you got great coverage, you got, you know, five bars of LTE on your phone or your hotspot here, it's telling you you're good to go and you hop on and your speed test app shows you that maybe you're pulling you know one megabit down or something you're like what gives i have full signal so the problem you run into there it's called saturation so too many people on one small internet pipe basically the mm -hmm. cell phone tower mm -hmm. um, and you'll generally run into that as you get into touristy areas a like lot. grand tetons in the middle of the summer yep so we had four bars of lte and i could barely make a phone call it was just like not happening in most of the park. And, and you know, we found little areas where it wasn't that bad because I think we picked up a second tower or something. Right, so there's yeah. always, yeah. So A, is there coverage? Yes, great. B, is the tower oversaturated because you're in a seasonal touristy area? The cell phone companies aren't gonna put a ton of bandwidth out there if it's only used for a month or two of the year. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something to always you know, prepare for and that's why we carry, again, three. So you talked about doing a speed test. Um, what is a speed test and what do you recommend using? Sorry, jumping 10 steps well, ahead That's okay, <laughs> I just, as I'm going, it's just coming out in conversation, guys. This yeah. is what, what it is. Uh, so a speed test, basically what that does is a it downloads a file or there's um, other apps that test streaming to Netflix, let's say. Um, so it'll do it over a period of, you know, 10 to 30 seconds and then it tells you that your speed is, you know, 10 megabits per second or five kilobits, you know, per second. You don't want the K. The K means it's so slow that you can barely even check your email. Correct, yeah. You so, want the M. <laughs> yeah, so again, maybe in the next video we'll go more into yeah you know, network packet But we use what transfer. speed test? So what, if you can recommend one speed test. Uh, yeah. One speed test, I would probably say um, Open Signal. Okay, so Open Signal, it's an app you can get on your phone? Yep, you can get it on multiple platforms. It might be called something different on Android, um, but you can always just Google Open Signal plus your platform, you know, iOS or Android. Um, so, and that app's really beneficial for a couple different reasons is A, it's got a built-in speed test, and B, it also has a map feature that shows you um, not only where the tower, what direction the tower is in, but you can actually click on that and it will bring up and show you location-wise where the tower is that you're connected to. Mm -hmm. um, so that, again, 
maybe on the next video when we yeah. talk about using uh, directional Yagi antennas and cell boosters more in depth. Um, that's where something like that would really come in handy. But yeah, first and foremost, uh, open signal. Speedtest.net works. Um, part of the issue with speedtest.net is they get uh, higher priority on the networks. So it might show you that you have, you know, 80 megabits down and you're like, oh, I'm good to go. But then you try and surf the internet and it's dog slow. So what the a lot of the carriers are doing is they see traffic coming through speed test and so they prioritize it really high and so they let them through oh, first. I didn't even know that. Yep. Okay. So that's where um, actually a second, or I should say a third mm -hmm. app here in this case, mm -hmm. um, is actually from Netflix. It's called Fast. And you can do it on your computer at fast.com or there's... F-A-S-T? Yep, F-A-S-T. Okay. Yep. They probably, I didn't even know this. this. I'm learning so much from him because he does all of this for us and I know the basics, but... Yeah, they probably paid him in for that domain name four letters only. I'm sure. I'm um, sure. But it's Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, fast.com or on your phone. Um, it was actually created during the time when uh, different carriers began to throttle Netflix. So Netflix came up with that. So you can test that app and what it does, it connects directly to Netflix um, and simulates that you're streaming traffic. And so then you can know that you're getting um, kind of the result that you're going to expect. You know, mm -hmm. so if you do try and stream Netflix or you're mm -hmm. trying to download a game or update through the App Store, different things like that, then you know that that's going to be your speed. Um, and the other nice thing, too, is you can also tell when you're being throttled. Because let's say you did a speed test through like speedtest.net, it shows you're getting 40 or 50 down mm -hmm. uh, megabits again. Uh, but then you try fast and it shows you're getting 5 or 10 maybe. And literally it'll sit at 10. Um, and so that'll let you know that your carrier is throttling you because you might have gone over your data allowance. Um, yeah. Different things like that. So there's. I know. We could go so into depth that he's like, I'm, I'm going off. He's getting Sorry. a little more technical, but that's okay. Going into the weeds here. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring us back because I'm going to try and make it simple again. Yes. So cell phone, you can tether yep. and use a little bit of hotspot data on most cell phone plans. That gives you 10 to 20 gigs. Yep, of, of mobile of mobile tethering. hotspot yep mobile share basically how much data you can share and your cell phone is on whatever carrier you're on so verizon yep. at&t if they have if they don't have signal you don't have anything exactly so you need to make sure you have signal so we have three different plans because we both work online and it's our bread and butter we need it and we want to travel full time and we don't want to have to stress too much now there are times where we still don't have any signal in any of these. <laughs> national parks, people, like you yeah. don't get signal in the national parks. So you're yeah. lucky if you can find signal in one of the carriers in the national parks. Right. But what do you need when you talk about upload and download? Can we talk about that for just one minute? Because even when I talk to our friend Ashley, she still gets confused when you're like, <laughs> oh, I had whatever down and whatever up. She's like, she messaged me last time and she goes, what is that again? <laughs> and she's the one who does all their internet and she works online full time. So like it can get really confusing. So. What is upload and download, and what's the bare minimum for me to be able to work online? So I know that, that's like an oh, like like that's a big bloated she's question. Me, she's pulling me into the weeds here. It's kind well, of no, it needs to be a simple. So make it simple. <laughs> All right, so simple. So there's three factors that affect your internet speed or how fast your internet feels, and so there's your download speed, how fast you can receive information. There's your upload speed, how fast you can send information. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a third thing called latency, which is basically the time it takes for this device to send a signal um, out to a remote server somewhere, whether that be Facebook or you know a Zoom call or whatever, and then for that signal to come back. So that's measured in milliseconds, and the lower the better. So um, you want low latency, which yep. is usually the first number you see when you do a test. With latency, right? No, they usually show you download because that's what most people are oh, concerned okay. with. I want to stream. I want to listen. I want to watch Netflix. I want to listen to music. And you need download for that. So that's where your download comes in when you're streaming, you're listening to music, uh, podcasts, audiobooks, all that, and you're bringing information to you. That's your download speed. So the higher that is in megabits, the quicker it's going to come in. Um, minimum download. Minimum download to work. Um, it varies, again, based on the type of work you do. I would say at least five megabits down. Um, then if you're starting to look at, if you do a lot of Zoom calls, video conferences, Skype, 
whatever. Uploading videos to YouTube. <laughs> uploading videos to YouTube, yes, you want good you upload. You need upload for that. Right, so that again determines how fast you can send information out. Um, something else to determine too. What? Is your latency. We talked about mm -hmm. that. So you could have, let's say, a great upload, 20 megabits per second, but if your latency is up in the two to three hundreds, maybe even higher, that doesn't matter. You're your, gonna, your video you're gonna cut a bunch, right? Is your that video is going to be really choppy. So you're going to talk, and then again, 300 milliseconds—that's 0.3 of a second—doesn't sound like a lot, but people on the other end are going to wait. You know, they're going to say, mm -hmm. "Hey, Tony, what did you think about this thing on the meeting thing?" And I'm going to say, "Oh, it was this." But there's going to be a big break between. There's going to be a delay, so okay. you could have good mm -hmm. good down and upload, but if you have low uh, high latency, again. You know, above okay. two to three hundred, then you could run into issues. So, what did we have when we were in sticks and bricks? Uh, we had the we had Comcast uh, cable modem, so we had two hundred and fifty megabits down. Two hundred and fifty, and we're like, if we get five to ten download, we are rocking. Yeah, so we had two hundred. <laughs> Life on the road's a little different, guys. <laughs> yeah, but then the nice thing though with a cable modem or DSL line or whatever in your house, your latency is generally in the single digit milliseconds. Yeah, so it's it's usually amazing with a hardwired at home. Yeah, you, n you never notice. Yeah, so this is very different, but it is still functional. It's very I'm able functional. to do Facebook Live, and you're able to do Zoom calls every, or well, do you use Zoom? Whatever, Google conference Google. calls. Yep. Every day he has a conference call. Yep. You know, we're able to, to make it work, and uh, we just want to talk about simply as we've gone in a little bit of depth and trying we had to, to shift a little bit and we're trying to get back on track here. Simply what we need. Mm -hmm. So plans, should we talk about the, the hot spots and the plans? Yeah, so again, various carriers, they have different offerings. Um, what are the three biggest ones in the US? The three biggest carriers? Three biggest carriers that we'd recommend for good cell signal throughout the US. Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, pretty much in that order. Why not Sprint? Uh, Sprint is more limited, although that may change because T-Mobile's uh, talking about merging. Those are like them. the top four that I even know off the top of my head. There's a lot of resellers yeah. and... There's U.S. Cellular as well mm -hmm. in limited areas, and there's regional, smaller... And pockets. those smaller ones work really good when you're in a city. But if you're RV in the States full-time, you're not always in a city. Like yeah. a lot of times people are doing this because they want to get out in the country, and then you are limited. So. Yeah. Yeah, so the three different carriers that we're using, we have different plans on all of them. Um, and again, we've been doing this over two years, so plans have obviously changed. Mm -hmm. And we got locked in, so. Quite a lot, but we, we got locked in at good ones at the time, so we haven't let them lapse. Uh, with AT&T, there is a data add-on option for $20 to an existing phone plan, which I already had. And so for $20 more, I got an unlimited data device. Which it's not always case. the case anymore. I don't think they even no. offer anything like that. Nope, anymore, that plan so. is that plan's long gone. So for twenty dollars, we get an unlimited AT and T. Doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Verizon. We purchased a uh, somebody else's old. They called them grandfathered unlimited data plans. Something like that. They haven't been around for years. They cost a lot of money, and you're you essentially have no idea. yeah. So it's it's semi gray area, and then uh, T Mobile. Um, we actually picked up a, a tablet add-on plan that I had found. So it's only about $40 a month, um, but it's actually done fairly well out here, especially in Wyoming. Um, yeah. Because the AT&T and Verizon Towers get overloaded and not a lot of people have T-Mobile, so. <laughs> well, and another thing about T-Mobile recently, we've talked to friends of ours that have gone over the border and they've gone down to Mexico. Yes. And T-Mobile works really well compared to the other plans down there. And they have roaming. So that's the biggest okay. thing is you get international. Um, an older plan T-Mobile used to have was the, I think it was the One Plus International or something. So it was, wasn't cheap. It was about $95, but that got you quite a lot of data that worked in Mexico and Canada. So if you're planning those trips to mm -hmm. go south of the border yeah. or up to, you know, land of the snow, maple people. <laughs> Canada, <laughs> um, We're in, from Minnesota. We yeah. get it. We bordered Canada. <laughs> yeah, up in Can Canada. <laughs> Canada, that's what we say. Yeah. Um, so that's where those, yeah. types, uh, those types of plans would help. Mm -hmm. And then international travel I've done for work. 
Um, I brought my AT&T phone with because they had a um, international roaming agreement. So for $10 a day, you get access to your plan. And so my plan happened to be unlimited data. So every day I turned it on um, when I was traveling internationally for work, if I needed it, I would have unlimited 4G LTE mm -hmm. data. Um, and again, based on your needs and your wants, there's a million and one options, but you got to find something that works for you. Cell phone, hotspot. Mm -hmm. So we can move more into the coverage range. Um, so All right, so one second. Everybody's going to ask us. Yes. And I, I'm right about this, right? So what cell phone plan should I get? Yeah. We can't tell you that, you guys. We don't the, know what cell phone plan you should get. They're always changing. By the time this video airs. Always changing. Yeah. Right now, in 2019, the best cell phone plans to get, or at least carriers, T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T. What plans to get? They're always changing. My best yeah. advice to you is to reach out, join different Facebook groups where people are talking about it, full-time RVers, um, hop on, comment below in the comments to this video, and yeah. we'll try and keep responding to that. Yeah. But I know that's gonna be your biggest question. Well, what plan should I get? It's always changing. Yeah, it's always changing. You have different needs. Yeah. So, and when yeah. you lock into one and it's great, keep it. Yeah, keep it if you can. <laughs> a lot of them are no contract anymore, which sounds great, but then they can cancel that plan at any time. Yep. If you're not on so a contract. Like, so now, it, now we're reverse of where we used to be. We used yeah. to be stuck in like a two year plan, and now, yeah. now you're like, good, no, I want to be on contract with my super. So that it's great, and they don't do anything to it. Right, so that it's locked in. So. Okay, cell phone, hotspot. How do we make sure that they run, they work, we get good signal? So right. we're gonna talk about that simply. Simply. We're trying, try, try we're trying not, to be simple. <laughs> try not to go in the weeds here. So, okay, what's the easiest one to start with? Um, so just the um, hotspots are actually more inferior to a cell phone. Sounds weird, you'd think, oh, a data device is gonna be way better. Nope, so a cell phone actually can do 10 times more amazing things than these can, um, but you can't share with a phone like you can with a hotspot mm -hmm. in some, in most cases. Um, so that's where, well, and the other thing too is, hey, I'm gonna go for a walk around the campground. Are you gonna take your whole family's internet with you and leave, every, <laughs> leave yeah. everyone back at the RV? You know, trying to stream Netflix or get homework done or get work done or anything like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So this is where a dedicated data device comes in handy. All the carriers offer different models, as you can see, uh, different shapes, colors, what have you. Most of them work on most networks. Um, so let's say you get somewhere and your signal is teetering, you know, you're maybe at one or two bars here and there, speeds are a little slow. What can I do? Well, handy dandy little magic <laughs> black thing here. This is called a MIMO antenna. We won't go into what MIMO is, that's for the probably upcoming next video. <laughs> but basically what it does, it's kind of like your rabbit ears back in the day. Well, actually it's like the new digital high definition TV um, over the air antennas. Okay. So it's basically just like a pair of rabbit ears, but for your hotspot. And so in this case, there's a couple little ports down here. It doesn't matter which port, just both. Yep, so it's got Plug two. it in. Again, we won't go into MIMO. That's for the next one. But so what this does is it helps to actually bring in a little more signal to your hotspot and it might get you over that hump. Let's say you're on a conference call and you're dropping out. We've actually had that. I carry multiple of these around because we meet new people that are on the road and they're like, oh, I tried a conference call this morning and you know, we just launched two weeks ago and I don't know what to do. And I'm like, here, take an extra one. Cause I he always- He gifts these, you guys. <laughs> we see people and he's always got extras and he's giving them buy, away. Yeah, I buy it, three or four. It's they're, a good starter. Yeah, they're, they're, it's a, it's a no brainer starter. They're passive, so you don't need power for them. They're portable. I carry mine if I'm in a coffee shop somewhere or in a town, if I go to work at or- And you always bring a hotspot with. You're yep. not always dependent on their Wi-Fi. Correct, yes. Well, <laughs> you, and, might, you might use it, but usually yeah. you try to use it. And this. because of the nature of my work, I feel more comfortable using, Yeah. you know, yeah. uh, non-public Normally, means. I just wanted to point out, normally this has suction cups. Yeah, so you, you can, can see that. You can suction cup it or there's little- so you suction it to your window and then it picks it up better. Yep. That makes sense. Yep. Or there's little clips you can hang it off your laptop. 
Um, so that's kind of an easy, quick solution to boost. Again, it's not really boosting anything, it's just a pair of rabbit ears. You know, right. back in the day you could wrap them with foil and anyway. I'm dating myself here. I know, we're, we're getting old. So that's kind of entry level, you know, cellular amplification. What if I want to go all in? Like, okay, we are going to full-time RV live, we're going to travel the country, and I have to have good internet. Like, I'm ready to invest, what should I do? Everything here. <laughs> I mean, the big Not one, really, is the WeBoost. Right. So Everybody this talks is, about it. Yeah, this is the WeBoost uh, 4GX, the Drive 4GX, and um, we bought this right as we launched because I was going to be working full time and then for this Jill, reason and Jill started picking up full time now it's nothing you need every single day all the time but the times that we've really really needed it is you know it saved us yeah, so it's, it's many made times. a big difference it has you know even where we're currently staying without it we're not getting anything and I even have a 40 foot pole outside with a directional antenna and once I turn this on, then all of a sudden I can start switching between different networks and um, getting actual you know, semi-functional internet to use while we're mm -hmm. staying where we're staying. Um, so something the booster will do for you, it's going to take existing cell phone signal and generally make it faster. And I say generally because it doesn't always. And the big thing is there, guys, if there is no cell phone signal, it will not help you. Yeah. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. WeBoost is not like the end all be all magic pill for everything. No. But if there is cell phone signal and it's really slow or it's not the greatest, sometimes this can make such a difference. Yeah. So I it, I so recommend it. And this is actually part of it. And you just put your hotspot next to it. Yep. Right? Or even your cell phone right next to it. And it's boosting it like just like this. Yep pretty simple yeah so it's definitely a game changer it's not a magic pill but um, mm -hmm. I've heard lots of people complain about them that they don't work but at the same time you understand it you know I understand it works it works and the other thing too is even if you let's say you had good cell phone signal you don't want to turn this on what it's gonna do it's going to basically make it so that these little jetpacks are gonna get overpowered by the amount of signal and they'll actually lower the performance of the jetpack so this is a, you know, kind of a last ditch effort, you know, you, like I said, yeah. we, we got a directional antenna on a, you know, 30 foot pole out back and, you know, pumping it through a cell phone booster, having this pointed at the, uh, at the hotspot or different adapters, you can actually connect it right into the hotspot and it makes it semi-functional. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're seeing the other stuff on the table okay. here. Okay, are we ready to... I'll just touch... 60 seconds of touching? I'll touch... Touching very, lightly? Very lightly. Not, Time I'm us. Just, I'm just gonna... <laughs> I'm just gonna put my toe into the weeds <laughs> just a touch. Um, so this right here, this is a standard home Wi-Fi router and access point. And you're like, why do you need that? You don't have a house. Well, we don't, but the nice thing with this is you can actually hook up a cell phone or sorry a hotspot via usb to this particular model and what it'll do is it'll share the internet from the hotspot through a wi-fi router so what you're going to get out of this is more range you can get more devices and then you also get other benefits like you can hook up hard drives printers so does that mean i can sit outside in our gazelle tent on my laptop and work and i can still get like signal to the hotspot inside exactly right that's the range we're talking about yep right? so essentially this now becomes part of your you know like your home internet setup cool and then you can share and actually broadcast your signal further so what is this one and what's it called just so people want this is an know. asus uh ac 1750 now called the 68u uh, but this particular one is nice like i said because it allows you to hook up either a hotspot or it'll actually even take a phone um, as an internet source and then rebroadcast it. So again, it's not going to make it faster necessarily, but what it'll do is allow you to share to more devices and a further range because these things are great up to about 15 feet. <laughs> yeah, and if your RV is big, if there's several people in your family yep. and you're all on devices, or if you want to be outside and still get signal, right. it can make a big difference. Instead of dragging this with you, or mm -hmm. there's one good spot in the RV where you get really good signal yep. and it's not where you want to be, yep. you know, in the bathroom, something like that. <laughs> you never know. 
<laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. But yeah, so then you don't have to sit super close to this. Um, okay, next one. Yeah, so next up is... <laughs> what? I'm trying. You're trying. We're doing it's, it. It's doing I, good. Yeah. It's keeping me on track. Yeah. So this looks a little bit similar to this. And you're like, why do you need another, you know, Wi-Fi hotspot? I don't even know. I'm learning so much so right this now, is a custom. This is, this is something I built. So this is basically a dedicated LTE modem. So in other words, it's a glorified hotspot. But what I did is I purchased a um, super high-end LTE modem and then put it in this lovely little carrying case here, which has a built-in Wi-Fi router. And so it'll take what you can do with a hotspot times a thousand. Wow. Yes. I didn't even know that. He's always the one back there just playing around with it all. <laughs> I say playing. It's what we need and I appreciate it, but I don't yeah, know. There's a lot of fidgeting and mm -hmm. poking and, you know, for most people, a lot of this is not needed. Maybe the maybe the wee boost, but mm -hmm. most people are going to be able to get by on hotspots or, you know, if, well, if you don't need a ton yeah. of data, you can get by on your phone. So that's my 60 second. I'm stopping there because I won't go into. Okay how I can access band 66 now with my category 12 LTE modem. <laughs> he wasn't going to go See? I'm not going into that. Last but not least, and we are not going outside because it's getting dark out, but tell them about our directional antenna. Yes. So with your, when we purchased the Wii Boost, we got a, what's called an omnidirectional antenna. Mm -hmm. So omni Small. meaning any direction. So where that's nice is it's simple. You don't have to think about it. All you do is, as long as it's hooked up, and you know powered up here you don't have to worry about pointing it so we had that and we still do on yep. top of our ladder on the back of our rv right yep okay and then about a year in we were gifted yes. from good friends of ours an yep. omnidirectional antenna because they no, were getting directional. off the road. I'm sorry, a directional antenna. A directional. Because they were getting off the road. And so tell them about that. So the directional antenna comes into play because an omnidirectional is just that. It'll take signal from anywhere. Um, sometimes that's good, again, because it's ease of use. Downside to omnidirectional, you can't tell it to go in a specific direction. Mm -hmm. So in combination with that app that I spoke of earlier, Open Signal, where it tells you the direction of the towers, what you can do with a directional antenna that you can't do with an omnidirectional is you can actually point it. So you directional. can directionally. So you can say you can look on your map. And where's say, the tower? Where's the AT and T tower? Right. Where's the tower? Oh, point it there. Yep. So you can focus that, and you actually get a better um, rate of return or better signal boost mm -hmm. um, if you're able to point it straight at versus just having a stick up that mm -hmm. you know is gathering signal from where it can. So that brought us better signal. I feel like I don't know. I don't want to say better signal. Mm -hmm. I should say. Once we got the directional antenna, I feel like more more doors opened. Yeah, so the directional is nice because it's not, uh, you don't need to use a booster with it, just like with the omnidirectional. Um, but with the directional, you can actually, I have it wired in uh, temporarily, but then you can actually pump it straight to a hotspot bypassing this because you may not need more signal, but just having that focused antenna mm -hmm makes these things work um, quite amazing. But then you put all that together. And there again, have been times we've used this with the directional, right? That's what we're doing right now. Yeah, well, the kids have no internet right now. We're recording well, this because everything's right here. Obviously, it's all unplugged, <laughs> so nobody's doing nothing today. But, but yeah. that's what we have to do here. We're using the WeBoost and the directional antenna yep, and lot. two of our hotspots well, and, and that. Well, yeah, we're using the modem because this allows us to do what's called band locking. All right, next all right, next video. Ask questions <laughs> if you really have it, but that might be way over your head, it's over my head. Yeah, so using everything here in conjunction allows us to yeah. basically be able to stay online, work online, because we live online, and yeah. even though we live in an RV. <laughs> <laughs> we do live in an RV, but we live yeah. online. So hopefully right. that was a, a good primer. Again, if you have more questions, you want more in depth, pipe up, let me know, I'll be happy to go and <laughs> Go into the weeds, obviously. He loves to nerd out about this. Yeah. If you guys like to read things or you want to look at all of this, he wrote an awesome blog post that goes over everything we're talking about right here over on the blog. We'll link it down below. If you, again, questions, ask them. Yep. If you didn't watch our video from last week, we were talking all about how we lived in Rocky Mountain National Park with no internet and how that worked. 
<laughs> because sometimes you really just can't get internet. Zero. So check out that video if you're interested. Otherwise, we will uh, catch you guys next week. Yep. Again, if you got questions, comments, you want to nerd out with me. He's itching. Please ask him. Like, <laughs> listen to him. Questions. Come on. I want to nerd out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have links to all this down below, guys. So check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks again. Bye. Bye. The things that we do for internet. We got here to Rocky Mountain National Park and we knew we weren't gonna have internet, but Tony's determined to see if he could make it happen. So we have our giant pole and he's bringing it all the way up the hill and he's gonna see if he can get enough signal to kind of come back down the line and get in to, you know, make it to the, the wee boost in the RV. We'll see how this goes. <laughs>